Okay, hey guys, so we're gonna start our little Grasshopper data management sort of tutorial. So it's just an intro to um, tree structure and how Grasshopper um, compares lists and how to sort of work with data just to give you guys a bit of insight. So we're gonna start with this. We're gonna start with a series component. Um, all it does is count, basically. So you have a start, in this case we're gonna do zero. So your series of numbers, it makes a series of numbers. It starts with zero, step. So step is just the number it counts by. So if you do one here, we'll start at zero, it'll count zero, one, two, three, four, and on and so forth. Um, and we'll do a count. So we'll just do a little slider, zero, um, two, let's say like 10. Okay. Count is just the number of times that the the series counts. So if you see, if you plug it into a panel here, yeah, you can, uh, if you double click, you type double slash, it just gives you a panel, right? Just cool, cool nifty trick. So plug this into a panel here. So right now it's empty, but you see as I slide my slider, it counts. So it's done, so counts zero times, counts once, counts twice, counts three, four, five. Um, so I think we'll just stop there at five. And so now we just have series of numbers. And this is the basic grasshopper list. So you have your path, zero, semicolon zero. We'll get into this in a moment. And you have your items here, zero, one, two, three, four. And over here you have your item index. So zero, one, two, three, four, right? And grasshopper always starts counting at zero. So let's talk about how lists compare data. So just to help you visualize, we're gonna draw some points, uh, construct point. And we're gonna plug this into the y coordinate here. So you see over here, we get uh, we get a, a bunch of points, right? Because our series is from zero to four, and you plug that into the y coordinate, so you get a bunch of points that are um, from with different y coordinates, right? So you have point zero zero zero, which is here at the origin, point zero one zero, which is moved up by up in the y. 0, 2, 0, move up in the y by 2, and, and so on. So um, points go x, y, z coordinate. That's how, that's how they locate the points. Um, and let's do a move component now, just to show how Grasshopper sort of computes this, this movement. So if we're just going to copy this over here, and we're going to do a x unit x. So when you plug series into unit x, what you get is a bunch of vectors. So x vectors. So it looks it looks really similar to the points, right? Um, basically, the vectors are just the same as the points. It's just x, y, z units. And so you see these vectors are moving one in the x direction, two in the x direction, three in the x direction, so on. And so if we were to plug these into the move component so we move the point geometry and we move it by these these vectors see now we get this sort of diagonal line so we have our original bunch of points you know I'm just gonna turn this off uh, yeah okay so we have our original bunch of points 0 1 2 3 4 and now we have our move points so how grasshopper compares these lists to, to move these components is that you see we have our two lists <clears throat> we have a list of points and we have our list of um, vectors right and so the move component is just comparing them a uh, simple one-to-one -one comparison so you see point zero moves zero so so if we just just to help visualize this item here Okay, so just, just, just to help visualize. Um, so you see this point over here? It doesn't move, right? This is point zero. Point zero moves by zero. Point one, which was this point here, it gets moved by one. Point two, this item here gets moved by two. So, and point three, which is this item here, point three, and gets moved to the right by three, right? So that's how basic, um, basically how Grasshopper compares lists. It compares one list to the next list, right? And it compares all the 
each each list item to its corresponding list item, right? But what happens when we throw in some uh, some graphs? So you see that here we have a bunch of if you right click, you get a bunch of options: reverse, flatten graph, simplify, unitize, and expression. So today we're going to talk about graph. We're going to talk about tree structure. So if I were to take the unit x and I were to graph it, you see that we suddenly get this matrix of points. And so what happens here is that if we look over here, you see that the list structure has changed quite dramatically, right? So whereas before we have one list with five points, now we have five lists, right? Each with one point. So all graph does is all graph does is to graph all data to um, put each list item puts each each list item into its own list, right? So you can see that now they're all um, index zero, but they're all in separate lists because they are all now the first item in their in their respective list. Um, and so what happens when we compare down and out? Well, so now you see to make this it makes this grid of uh, points, and what's actually happening is it's comparing the first list, this one item, um, which is the vector, to every single point in this panel. Okay, so just to just to visualize, we'll do like a point list here, and we'll make a number slider just to visualize better. So. You see here in our grid of points, we have all the point zeros. Um, and bring out the list for this as well. So you can see the output here would be. Oh my gosh, this is a big one. Okay, try to fit it all on the screen. Right. So you see the output that we get from our move component now is one five lists of five items each, right? So one list, zero, one, two, three, four. So this would be one list, zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four. So these, this is one list, this is one list, this is one list, right? Um, and the comparison is because each point here, zero to four, gets moved by each of these vectors. So it's like if you take these five points and you move it all by zero, right? Which gives you the first list because none of them have moved. This is a unit X. So you're translating to the on the X axis in this direction. And you get these five points to translate and they get translated zero units. So they stay there. And then the next one get translated one unit. Next one gets trans two, translated two units, right? So it's just it's the same sort of like list comparison, except you have multiple lists now. And so you get this sort of multiplicative effect. Right, so how do we how do we sort of work with data like this? Like um, we understand that it's five groups of five items, right? And the groups are organized this way. So how, how do I get a certain item out of this? Like, you know, how do I get a certain group of items? Let's say if I want um, so if you do list item, which I'm sure most people are familiar with, how do I get certain configurations or, or certain patterns of, of items so that I can use it um, in my in my script or whatever, you know, whatever I'm trying to make. So if I if I get a list item here and I do a slider, so zero to ten, right? You see my list item, I'm just gonna join this here to show you. So my list item is gonna get me every item. At index zero, right? And every item at index zero would be all the all of these points, right? But how do I get maybe like one whole list? Um, to do that, you can use flip matrix, right? So what flip matrix does is it reverses the it reverses the rows, the rows. And the columns of your matrix, right? So if we plug this into the flip matrix and we plug it in here, you see that the rows, the rows and the columns have been reversed, right? So where your zeros were here before, 
I'll show you again. Zeros were here before. They are now here, right? And so in this case, if we go back to list item, you see that we can get, oh wait, whoops. I should plug this in here. Right, so now you go list item, you can see that now we can get uh, an entire column, whereas before we were getting a row. So that's, that's a really good way to get a row of items or a column of items, whichever, whichever you're trying to get. So this, this is essentially grasshopper tree structure, right? So if you pull up this tool called param viewer, um, let's talk about how this, this data is sort of organized. I'm just gonna plug that back in there. Okay, so let's talk about how this is organized. So our original list of our matrix, we plug it in here. The param viewer, it's just, param viewer is just a, a tool to help you analyze sort of like the structure of your, your tree. So you see that it says data with five branches. So data with five branches, n equals five. So n equals five means the size of your list, right? So if we pull up a panel here, you can see that each list has five items, zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, so there's five items, n equals five, right? And this is list zero, 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 list zero, zero, zero. Um, and so it just shows you five branches. Each branch is basically one list. So if you double click param viewer, it shows you this graphical representation of your tree. And you can see that here zero zero, the number zero zero uh, is your path again, and it represents your tree trunk, right? So you see that all the path, all the lists here start with zero zero. So the first two zeros this is your tree trunk. This is where all your, your data sort of um, originates from. And then you have the third number, zero zero zero, zero zero one, zero zero two, uh, three and four. These are the individual branches. So 001, uh, 001, 000, 002, uh, 3, and 4, right? And these are your individual branches. So the best the best analogy for how tree structure works, it's like having um, files, files on your computer, right? Like if you have one folder, like let's say you have uh, maybe schoolwork, right? You have a main folder for schoolwork. This will be your main folder zero, 00, your trunk. And then you have files for each of your courses. So you have zero, zero, 000, maybe this, I don't know, your English course, and this one's your math course, and this is your like geography course, whatever, all right? Um, and inside each of these, inside each of these files, each, each of these folders, you have items, right? So these items are inside each of your folders, which are housed inside your main folder. And that's basically sort of grasshopper tree structure. So to manipulate or to get, you know, how do, how do you access one of these branches? How do you access one of these folders? Well, what you can do is if you plug in param viewer, param viewer gives you the path of all the branches in your tree. So you see that this, the data that comes out of here is not actually the points that we got before. So you see here, we get a list of points, right? Whereas here, we actually get a list of paths. I know it looks, it looks similar because they're both three numbers, but these are, these are branch paths and these are points, right? And so with these paths, you can actually do a list item and you can pick out a path, right? So let's say we want to do path, we want to do the first path, we want to do 000, zero, zero. All right, just to visualize, do 000, zero, zero. just pop that in there, oh, see, so that doesn't work, because that's just um, the path, right? Sorry, that was, <laughs> did a whoopsie. So that just gives you the path, so it's not actually a point. What you want to do here is you want to get this component, it's called where is it? Tree branch. Here we go. Tree branch. So with tree branch, you can plug in your tree. In this case, our, our points. And you can plug in the path. So in this case, our path is this, is 0, 0, 0, right? So you can plug this in. And it gives you the entire branch. So if we plug it this in here, you see that it gives us branch 0, 0, 0, right? So this is our first branch. So remember, we set our groups where this is our first group of points, this is our second group of points, our third group of points. Well, here we can get an entire group, right? Zero to four. 
So this is just another way of getting your data. So you can see we move down and get each branch. And then even further, if we want to pick just one point, we can do uh, another list item. And we can pick individual points on this branch. So, you know, I can pick whichever point I want from this branch. And I can also pick um, which branch I want it from. Right. So now you can basically you can maneuver through all the columns and you can maneuver through all the rows to get a single item or however many items you want. Right. And that's that's a um, basic grasshopper sort of tree structure.